When the CEO of a company, like Microsoft, or a public official leaves office, it's often the most public version of the personal reboot. After being in charge and in the spotlight, it can be kind of a challenge to figure out what to do next. So as one Seattle mayor leaves and a new one arrives, I sat down with somebody who's been through this before. So Wes Ullman sitting with me today, you were mayor of Seattle from 1970 to 1978 sort of tumultuous time for the city? The city was going through a real process of reinventing itself. What was it like? Well, it depends upon what area you want to talk about, reinvention. Um, we were going through all of the civil rights issues. We were going through all of the other kinds of civil unrest that really impacted the city. And then, of course, there was the time came very shortly after I was elected when the Boeing Company almost went broke. Uh, they uh, laid off uh, 39,000 people and almost the 25% unemployment rate in the city. So we were broke. And it, it, was, it was not a fun time, but uh, we weathered through and did fine. What was your initial reaction when you found out about the big Boeing bus? What were you going to do? And are you, are you proud of the way that you handled it? Well, the city really was ready to really open up as a city. We were kind of a small town until that, that, point, that point in time. And I had grand plans. I had all kinds of things we were going to do, we were going to do this and that. They cost money, and we didn't have any money when all of our neighbors and our constituents were out of work, so they weren't being able to pay taxes. But we had to cut way back on our grand plans and decide what we could do with what we had. What were some of those things? We talked a little bit about arts and community. Well, Seattle was uh, kind of, uh, we were called by one of the great conductors from the East Coast. Uh, uh, the dustbin of the country in terms of the arts. Uh, we really opened up the arts. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we decided that we're going to have a uh, mayor's arts festival, which, which subsequently, a couple years later, was called Bumbershoot. And Bumbershoot's still here. That it was you. It's here and it's thriving as, as ever. I don't think people my age or people who have just moved to the city could even imagine a time when Seattle wasn't known for being a cultural hub of arts and creativity that it is now. But when we talk about reinvention, you're very firm in the fact that you don't think anyone should stay in office for more than two or three terms, depending on what it is, and you stuck to that, even, even when you made it into an office that you had been working towards. So in your second term as mayor, you then ran for governor of Washington, mm -hmm. and in the primaries you lost to Dixie Lee Ray. Was it, was it tough to look forward to the future and even imagine reinvention at that point? Oh, no. Uh, I've always been a believer that when one door closes, another door opens, and I, I always remain very, very committed to that concept in my life. Um, we carried 36 of 39 counties. The only trouble was we didn't carry uh, King County, Pierce County, which was Dixie Lee's home county, and, uh, and Snohomish, and everywhere else in the state we carried. So I looked upon that, it wasn't a win, but it, you know, it was kind of a... It's the one you could feel okay yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you look back, you have such a positive attitude, and I think that that's something that translates to people in a unique position like you have, and to anyone who's looking to reinvent themselves or start over. Do you ever allow yourself to look back and have regrets? Do you think that you made any mistakes? Oh, of course we make mistakes. Uh, that's not the issue. I just don't dwell on them and, and I try to forget them, to be honest. I, I certainly, I don't, don't make enemies, uh, although there may be a couple out there somewhere. <laughs> but uh, uh, I've always tried to be very, very positive in my life and in my outlook on life and uh, to, 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 to open the next door. I heard that you have even counseled uh, our former mayor, Mike McGinn, and, um, and been sort of uh, an ear and, and lent him advice. Is this something that you would tell him as he looks forward to reinvent himself as staying positive, one of your, your top three with a bullet? <laughs> well, I, I would advise Mike to do a couple of things. Look upon his, his own personal exit into, into, back into the real life. <laughs> uh, and that's difficult because you are so programmed from morning, almost every morning at breakfast meeting. And you're programmed clear through the evening. Sometimes you go to two dinners in a given evening. And it's hard to decompress. And I would advise him to take a little bit of time and do that. And I, I did not do that as much as I should have. But uh, 
uh, he's going to miss his policeman driver. <laughs> Is that one of the hardest things to get used to? Yeah. Well, <laughs> as I say, you know, your program to go from here to there to there, and so your your policeman driver takes you and drops you off. Now, when you're out of office, you can start looking for parking places. <laughs> <laughs> I think people know this. It was a small, non-speaking role. But you've been in a major Hollywood film while you were mayor. Yeah, Harry in your pocket. Harry in your pocket. Yeah. That's pretty fun. How did that come to be? Uh, they, some, some, one of my staff came across the fact they were coming to town, and they said, uh, would you like to have the mayor in there? I said, sure, because it will help you know, sell tickets. And so they had to talk me into it a little bit, but it was fun to do. Uh, I was surprised at the, the huge amount of time you, you spend there just waiting for everything to get you know, prepared. Were you nervous? No. No, no it was no. just a fun thing to do. You're, you're comfortable with public speaking. You've, yeah. already, you've already had 10,000 people yelling at you. I think being in a non-speaking role yeah, shouldn't yeah. be too much. Yeah, yeah. Wes Ullman, this has been so much fun talking to you. Yeah. And I, I well, appreciate the advice. Molly, my pleasure. I've enjoyed meeting you and being here. <laughs> <laughs>